This is Ken Boyd with St. Louis Test Preparation, and this is the first in our series on reading comprehension and studying for the ACT exam. Our course is called More Comprehension in Less Time, which is the goal that we have for our students. If you need more information on St. Louis Test Preparation, we do a variety of teaching with math, English, and the ACT exam. Our website, our email address, and phone will be listed here during the presentation. There's a reading challenge for some students, and the re reason we have a challenge is, is that we have so much pat what we call passive entertainment. Students now have a variety of entertainment choices that don't require them to be actively engaged. Instead, this entertainment is passive. It doesn't require the person to read or think. Examples include video games, web surfing, and television. The entertainment sort of flows over you, and it doesn't require you to be focused and actively engaged. And there's a detriment to students. Students read less and they have less focus. As a result, their reading is slow. They don't read a lot. Their vocabulary doesn't expand. They're not seeing words as often or as many words as prior generations did. And they don't use critical thinking skills often enough. We can define all these skills as active reading. And that's, active reading is something we want people to be involved in when they take the ACT exam. If the student does not use active reading skills, courses with heavy reading requirements like English, history, and even the sciences will become difficult because they simply don't have the tools to do the work efficiently. But there's a possible solution. Students can change the way they read and how they think about what they read. And there's a key element. People improve focus when they do something with what they read. And specifically, when they think, when they write, they circle, they underline. You're actively involved in what you're reading. Students need to understand why they are reading an assignment and how they will use the information. For example, is it a quiz, a test, an essay, a term paper? How important is it? How long is it? When will I use the information again? Is it time sensitive? And students need to connect details to an overall theme. One thing we really try to emphasize is we try to relate ideas and concepts to things that students already know. And for complicated projects like reading a novel, we need to be able to have a theme and connect facts to the theme. Literally hang facts on a timeline or an outline that's the theme for a book or a novel. Now about the test itself. Reading comprehension content areas, the toughest of which is prose fiction. Reading is, the reading is taken from a novel or a short story. And the students dropped into the middle of a story that they haven't read before, most likely. Questions are asked about the setting and mood of the scene, the interactions between characters. There is also a vocab question very often when you get a prose fiction question on the ACT. So let's say you're dropped into a scene where uh, there's a captain of a ship and some passengers and they're passing out of a harbor and going out into the sea and you're supposed to assess the mood of the story, how the characters interact. The other content is content that we see more traditionally. Social studies, economics, history, and politics. Humanities, art, film, philosophy, natural sciences, biology, chemistry, and other sciences. These are a little easier because these questions involve more facts than the prose fiction questions do. So most students feel that these questions are easier and that prose fiction is harder. Reading length. Typical reading length in the ACT is 750 words or about two pages of a book. At the end, almost always, there are 10 multiple choice questions. The challenge is the answers to these questions are not always explicit or clear. The students may face questions where they have to use reason and make a judgment about what they read, and these judgment questions are the most difficult. I have a lot of students who get frustrated because even the answers in the answer key aren't consistent with what they and their friends answer when they're doing practice questions because they involve judgment and reason and there's not a clear-cut answer. These questions using judgment also take longer to answer. Prior knowledge. 
many students walk into the exam with a great deal of knowledge in certain subject areas. Maybe you're taking biology right now in school when you're taking the ACT. But students should not rely on any prior knowledge when they read. The ACT test questions will only address information in the reading. Students should disregard their own background in a subject when answering questions. For example, if you're now learning that Pluto is not a planet in our solar system, if the ACT test says it is, you should assume the, the ACT facts are correct. Time management. Ideally, a student should be able to read a passage and answer 10 questions in 9 minutes. That breaks out to about 5 minutes spent reading the text and 4 minutes on answering questions. My typical student starts off the exam doing it in about 12 minutes, and through using these active reading skills, we make a real effort to get it down to 9 minutes without losing any comprehension, so more comprehension in less time. What types of questions will you be asked? Nearly every reading will include a main idea question. Typically, that main idea answer will be in the first and the last paragraph. Another typical question, number two in terms of frequency, the author's argument and point of view. In many readings, the author is arguing a point of view. Some writers discuss two sides of the same question, the pros and cons of an issue, and you're asked to interpret and understand each side of the question. Another question that's asked is, what's the author's motivation? What's he trying to get you to believe or buy into? Vocabulary, very common. Pay particular attention to words that are new to you. You might be asked to define that word. Read the sentence to understand what the word means. I think we've all read context. How is a word used in context? Inference. The most difficult questions involve inference and judgment. Phrases such as, based on the passage, the author infers, or we can conclude that the author believes, and the question goes on from there. That is the end of part one of our section on reading comprehension. You can find part two on YouTube if you need live tutoring, you can also go to our website, www.stltest.net, and my email and my phone number are listed here. If we can help you with the ACT, math, or English down the road, please let us know, and thanks.